Welcome to Faith Bible Church, located at the intersection of Interstate 10 and U.S. 90 in Sanderson, Florida. Our services are held every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Our midweek services are live streamed every Wednesday at 7 p.m. We can be viewed online through our social media, website, and mobile app. We welcome you to join all of our services, whether in person or online. Our mission is simple. Love God, love people, and serve the present age. It is our vision for God to be glorified. It is our vision of seeing God's people grow in grace in their callings. It is our vision to see the saints of God prosper, even as their souls prosper. To our visitors, we would like to stay in touch. Please take a few minutes to complete a visitor's card so we can continue to serve you. It is our honor to shine as lights of the world and witness the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ be glorified. We welcome you to worship and grow with us. Amen. Good evening and welcome to midweek service for Faith Bible Church. So glad that you all can join in with us on this evening. God has been good to us. He has blessed us and kept us. And we are forever grateful to him for all that he is and all that he is doing. So we honor the Lord for being here on this evening. God is good to us. Amen. I'm going to pray and get involved. Uh, get into the message uh, for tonight. Um, want to welcome you. Thank God for my wife, my kids, the church family, and online, and all of your support, all of your prayers. Um, we will be baptizing on this Sunday during our 10 a.m. service this Sunday morning. Our 10 a.m. service, we will be baptizing. And um, and want to mention also this month, uh, Elder William Green and and his team. Out at Core Civic, baptized 51 this month, 51. And um, so we still believe in baptism and communion. And God has blessed us and kept us. And we will be baptized in this Sunday morning at 10 a.m. So we have some people, candidates on task to be baptized. And if you feel that need, that urging, um, we want you to be baptized also. So, Father, we thank you for this day, for every day. As always, we acknowledge you in all of our ways and pray that you be glorified and you be magnified in all things. We pray and we ask, Father God, for the leading and guiding of your Holy Spirit. We ask that you continue to be glorified and be magnified. All of you and none of me pray that you continue to edify us and build up the body of Christ with your word and with your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, we also have a telephone line ministry that I was unaware. I don't think I was transmitting. My microphone had gone out on my phone, and I don't think I was transmitting the, the past couple of Wednesday nights, and I just figured out that maybe nobody was hearing me on the phone line. So um, I apologize for that. But we're still on our website and social media. So we're still digging into the um, unifying of the body of Christ is what we were and we're at a place in our thoughts and in our minds where um where we should be unified and um the message um has been centered around being unified so now we're at the place where jesus that one uh, looked like when he preached and when he teach it was things concerning the kingdom of god and if you remember after he was resurrected in the book of acts Luke wrote that he spent 40 more days after his resurrection teaching and preaching the kingdom of God. And repentance was for the kingdom of God. Yeah, the teachings were all centered around the policies and operations of the kingdom of God. 
salvation is about the kingdom of God and it's teaching us to pray. Even in that, Jesus said, when you pray, pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And in his closing of that, he said, and when you close this out, say, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So when we look at that, even in casting out devils, we see where Jesus said it is because the kingdom of God has come to you. That is why I'm casting out devils by the spirit of God. So it seems that wherever we see bad things being turned into good things, it's happening because of the power of the kingdom of God. Whenever we see evil works being stopped, overturned, turned around, it is because of the presence of the kingdom of God. Wherever there is salvation, restoration, renewal, deliverance, healing, it can all be credited to the presence of the kingdom of God. Where there is joy unspeakable and full of glory, there is kingdom. Where there is peace in the midst of storms, there is kingdom. When, when there is a, a, a spirit, when you see the spirit of heaviness replaced with the garments of praise, you see kingdom at work. So whenever hope replaces despair, the kingdom is at work. When breakthrough drives away captivity, that's the power of the kingdom. When the poor can be rich and the weak can be strong, there is the kingdom power. And, and that is what we are told to make the priority of our lives. I'm going to go to the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, where we've been for several weeks. That is where we are told to make the priority of our lives. The kingdom of God. To seek the kingdom of God, when we talk about seeking the kingdom of God, to pursue it, chase after it, follow after it, run it down. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And I've been on kingdom for several weeks now because the power of the kingdom is something that uh, I, I want us to focus on for just a minute and think about it. Think about it. Now, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I can remember when I was at home, smaller, much, much, much younger <laughs> than I am now. Every now and then, our, our, our mother, our mama would, would have us do things around go get stuff. And uh, we would have errands and things we would have to do. And, and many times, it would start like this. Her statements would start like this. Go. That's how it start. Go. It will start with that commandment. Go. Look. And whatever it was, find, and then do whatever she told you to do with it. Go look in the freezer and find that bag of meat and bring it to me. Go look in the cabinet and find that box that say whatever and bring that to me. If I was outside, me and my siblings were outside, sometimes it would be, Go inside the house and look in this place, the living room, the kitchen, the bathroom, wherever, and find and bring it to me. Sometimes the commandment would be, go look out there on the porch where I was sitting and bring me when you find it. And she would tell us what to bring. Go in my room and look beside my bed and find my pocketbook and bring it to me to seek. And when I thought about Jesus saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, to seek means that 
you're not going to just stumble on it. It's not going to be in your way. You have to make a deliberate, intentional effort to get it. Go look and find the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto you. You will know when you found it. Because of what we talked about when I opened up. Because when you find it, you will sense its power. When you find your peace, you found the kingdom. When you found your joy, unspeakable and full of glory, you, you found the kingdom. When you found your redemption and your salvation, you have found the kingdom. When you found your deliverance, you have found the kingdom. When you're weak and then you find your strength, you have found the kingdom. You found it. You know when you found it because you can sense the power of the kingdom. So Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek the power of the kingdom. A kingdom has dominion. Don't settle for anything short of the promises of the kingdom of God. And, and this seeking is, is not a physical journey. It's a spiritual journey. It may manifest physically, but he said, this is a spiritual journey. Don't settle for stuff and things and say that you're good with it because that stuff and things are going to automatically be added when you find the kingdom. So don't, don't, don't think that's just getting the stuff and the things is the kingdom. No, don't seek after that. Ain't no power in the stuff and the things. The power is in the kingdom. Keep seeking until you find the power of the kingdom of God. Don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. Don't become weary in well-doing. Don't give up on the kingdom of God. Do you remember in the book of Luke, the 18th chapter, Jesus told a parable and he was talking about the things of the kingdom of God. And he was talking about a woman that came to a judge to avenge her. And, and the judge, and the Bible says, the judge said, though I fear not God, yet this woman continually coming to me, weary me. And so he satisfied her request, even though he didn't fear God. And then in Luke, the 18th chapter, the sixth verse, he said, he said this. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, and here was the question, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? Is there anyone that will be looking for the kingdom of God? Will I find faith on earth? Has, has the troubles and the trials of this world caused you to lose hope in the kingdom of God? Because it looks like the wicked is prospering. Does that cause you to lose hope in the kingdom of God? Liars are still lying and hateful people are still doing hateful things and, and the underprivileged are still being exploited. There's still sickness and disease in the land. It seems like bad things are happening to good people. Has that caused you to lose hope in the power of the kingdom of God? Have you lost your faith? Have you become weary and well-doing? Have, have you given up on seeking the power of the kingdom and settled for where you are? When you lose hope, you quit looking for it. When you lose hope, you give up on it. And you settle in whatever place seems best. You lose 
faith. You, you, you lose confidence and you don't feel like trying again. You don't feel like loving again. You don't feel like hoping again. You don't, you don't feel like get, uh, 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 putting forth any more effort to it because there's been so many disappointments. So you decide to just settle short of what the promise of the kingdom was. And Jesus said, well, I find anybody that still believe in the power of the kingdom. You have to seek the kingdom of God. It won't be in plain view. You got to leave where you are and seek for the power of the kingdom. You could settle and just say this is just the way it is and this is just the way it's going to be and this is the way it's always been. So I'm just going to settle where I'm at. Or you can keep the faith and seek for it. Like one song we used to sing growing up, they used to sing a song that said, there's more joy somewhere. I'm going to ease on till I find it. There's more joy somewhere. There's more peace somewhere. There's more power somewhere. I'm going to keep on until I find it. Or will you faint and lose hope and settle? If there is no peace where you are, if there is no deliverance where you are, if there's no victory where you are, if there is no power where you are, the first thing you need to do is go look for it. Go find it. Seek for it. If you haven't found what you are looking for, then why are you sitting down? Why are you taking a nap? For why are you settling? Have you lost hope in the power of the kingdom of God? It's something to think about because Jesus made it a point to say, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek for it. You're going to have to look for it. You're going to have to make an intentional, deliberate effort to find it. One woman, if I can just call her, had an issue of blood and was diseased for 12 years, but she didn't lose hope in the power of the kingdom of God. She kept seeking till she touched the hem of his garment. One man sat alone beside the highway begging. His eyes was blind and he couldn't see, but, but he still had enough faith in the power of the kingdom of God that when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he cried out, son of David, have mercy on me. One man of great authority gave orders to other people. He could tell one soldier to go and they go. He could tell another one to come and they come. But when he had a dear servant to fall sick, even unto death, he realized he had no authority in that area. But he sought after the power of the kingdom and he found Jesus and said, don't come to my house. I got so much confidence in the power of the kingdom that if you just speak a word, I know my servant would be healed. Remember the Syrophoenician woman had a daughter vexed by a devil, but she put her hope in the power of the kingdom of God. And she sought Jesus until she found him. You remember the story? He ignored her and she kept on seeking. He insulted her and called her a dog, but she kept on seeking the power. Until she finally got what she wanted. Until she finally got what she was seeking after. And then Jesus said to her, woman, great is your faith. You, you, you never gave up your faith. You never gave up your confidence. You never gave up your hope in the power of the kingdom of God. I ignored you and you kept on believing. I insulted you and you kept on believing. When you are after the power of the kingdom of God, it takes more than just being ignored to stop you. When you're after the power of the kingdom of God, when you know you need a healing, when you know you need deliverance, when you know you need a breakthrough, it takes more than being called names to stop stop you. I'm going to seek on, ease on. I'm going to press on until I find what I'm looking for. I know there is power in the kingdom of God. And Jesus says, seek for it. 
Pursue it. Don't give up on it. It's real. She made the power of the kingdom her priority. Do more than just be religious. Get some power. Power to overturn things. Power to overrule things. Power to overthrow things. Power to restore things. Power to take back what the enemy stole for you. Don't just settle for being religious. Get the power. Seek for the power. Power to see something good coming out of something bad. The kingdom of God has come to overturn every bad thing that was working against you. This is why I believe Jesus said, make this your priority, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I want you to pursue it. Don't give up on it. I want you to chase it. I want you to believe in it. I want you to follow after it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, the dominion of God, the rule of God, the power of God, the authority of God. Look for that first and his righteousness. I told you it's a journey. Some people have given up on miracles and some people have given up on wonders. I haven't given up on it. It's a journey. It's a spiritual journey. He said, Seek for it. Don't give up on the kingdom of God. Don't give up on his dominion. He has not been overruled. He has not been overthrown. He is still on the throne. He is still the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is still able. Don't give up on God. Seek his kingdom. And his righteousness. His righteousness. He puts them together that seeking the kingdom of God goes hand in hand with and his righteousness. Those of you who, who know English know that and is that conjunction. That means that this go with that. He didn't say the kingdom of God or his righteousness because then it's one or the other. He said, no, they go together. It's the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What is righteousness? What is his righteousness? It is what will put you in right standing with God. Seek the kingdom of God and seek to be in right standing with the king of the kingdom. There is a way. I know he's holy and I know he's righteous. And I know he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And I know he's omnipotent. And I know he's all-knowing. And I know he's all-powerful. But there is a way for man to be in right standing with the king of the kingdom. It was preached by John the Baptist how to be in right standing. He said, this is the way. This is what you do. Repent. Repent. Change your mind. Turn. Get in right standing with God. What am I repenting for? What am I changing for? About the value that you have placed on being in right standing with God. Change your mind about them statements we make that seems to be so insensitive about being in right standing with God. Stuff we say like, I know Jesus wouldn't do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I ain't Jesus. No, change your mind. Change your attitude about that and place some value on being in right standing with God. Put some value on being in right standing with God. There are some people who don't value being in right standing with God at all. They would even ridicule you and other folk and make fun of people who appear to be trying to be in right standing with God. But being in good standing with God has great value. Put some value on being in right standing with God to be found where the Lord called you to be, doing what the Lord called you to do, being faithful to your calling has great value. It's important to me, and it should be important to you, that I be where the Lord called me to be. 
saying what the Lord called me to say, doing what the Lord called me to do. It's important to me to be in right standing with God. I don't talk about people and, and, and gossip because that's not Im important to me. I don't I, I don't try to be in everybody's business because that that's not important to me. I, I don't care about keeping up with the Joneses because that that really ain't that important to me. I don't care about recognitions and appreciations and and all them kind of ceremonies or or, or them programs because that's that's not really that important to me. I, I don't dwell on the many comments that people make about me or our ministry, but be, because some people can, what some people think just ain't that important to me. And uh, but what I do value, what I do consider to be very important is, is doing what the Lord say for me to do, to be in right standing with God, a charge to keep I have, that's important to me, a God to glorify, that, that means a lot to me, a never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky, that means a whole lot to me, to serve the present age, my calling to fulfill and may in all my power, everything within me, everything engaged to do my master will, I just want to be in right standing with God, as long as I'm in right standing with God, people can say what they want to say, think what they want to think, act how they want to act, I just want to be and right standing with God. It's important to me and it has great value. It means more to me than you do. It means more to me than your approval. It means more to me than your compliments. It means more to me than your affirmation. Being in right standing with God means everything to me. Place some value on his righteousness. I've got to be in right standing with God. I value God's righteousness. It's important to me. Because I want to hear him say, well done. I want to know that I'm in right standing with God. After I get through toiling down here, out in the sunshine, out in the rain, I want to know that I got a home up in that kingdom that I'm going to live with Jesus. And the only way I can do that is I've got to be in right standing with God because none but the righteous shall see God in peace. Righteousness. Place some value on being in right standing with God. They're going to think I'm weak if I forgive people. They're going to think I'm this if I act like God won't. They're going to think I'm this if I do. You better place some value on being in right standing with God. People might not like me if I do what God say. People might not want to be my friend no more. You better place some value on being in right standing with God. The kingdom of God and his righteousness to be in right standing. Last thing, look, look, last thing, look, and his righteousness. I'm, I'm, I'm. John the Baptist said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We got to repent. Change your way of thinking. You haven't placed enough value on being in right standing with God. You haven't sought to please God as much as you sought to please people. And you're in right standing with people. But when trouble comes, people can't always help you. But when you're in right standing with God, hallelujah, I wish I had a witness who knows what it's like to be in right standing with God. When it seems like everything is falling down around you, but you're in the right place where God called you to be. Don't, don't you know the power of the kingdom turns things around when you are in right standing with God? Look, look at the scripture. I, I, I got to go. Look at the scripture. Last thing for the night. Last thing for the night. Righteousness. Being in right standing with God. Look at this. Look at the father of faith. Just going to pull some scriptures. The father of faith. Abraham. Romans 4 and 3. You can write them down and go back to them. Romans 4 and 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham. Believe God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. There you go. And his righteousness. Galatians 3 and 6. Galatians 3 and 6. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. There you go. There you go. James 2 and 23. James 2 and 3 and 23. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, 
Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God, in right standing with God. All of the scriptures said that it was believing in God that caused Abraham to be considered righteousness, that he believed God. How do we know that Abraham believed God? How can we be so sure that Abraham was a believer? Do we know that Abraham believed God because he told us he did. Was it, was it his testimony? Is that how we knew? Or, or was it because he built an altar? Is that how we knew? Was it his talk? Was it his dress code? What was it? How do we know that Abraham believed God? How do we know that? Because God said, Get up. And Abraham got up. God said, go to a place I will show you. And Abraham went. God said, leave your kindred. And Abraham left his kindred and family. God said, sacrifice Isaac. And Abraham drew his knife. God said, stop, don't kill him. And Abraham stopped. Everything God said. Abraham did it. That's how we know Abraham believed God. It wasn't his talk. It wasn't his dress code. It wasn't what he wore. It wasn't his testimony. It was that he did what the Lord told him to do. How can you say you believe God, but you don't trust him enough to do what he said? We know Abraham believed God because he obeyed when God told him to. And God said, that's righteousness. That's righteousness. I told you to repent and you repented. Righteous. I told you to preach and you preach. Righteousness. Not because you talked about it. Not because you sat back and told everybody how you know there's a calling on your life and how you know the Lord wants you to do something. That don't declare you righteous. You got to do it. You got to believe God to do it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Believe in God enough to seek after the power of the kingdom. Believe in God enough to value being in right standing with God over everything else. When you quit talking faith, when you quit talking belief and start walking out faith, that's how we know you believe God. And when you believe God, is counted as righteousness. Go, look, and find. <laughs> Seem like I could still hear our mama now. Come here, boy. Go look and find. Go look and find. Go look and find the kingdom of God. Go look and find how to be in right standing with the king of the kingdom. Go look and find the power of the kingdom of God. Go look and find the value of being in right standing with God. Don't sit back like you got it made. Don't settle. Until you find it. Go. Look. Find it. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God. And his righteousness. Make that the priority of your life. And all those things. 
all that stuff be added to you. Father, we thank you. We repent right now for any unbelief. For all that we've done and for every heart that every mind and every thought that may have lost confidence in the kingdom of God and your power. Forgive us. Forgive us and lead us into the right path. That we may go look, find the power of the kingdom of God. Find the value of being in right standing with the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Help us to make that the priority of our lives. To put everything else aside. To live our lives. To please you. In Jesus name. For those that are not saved. Just pray this prayer with me. Father God. In the name of Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and be my God. I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I believe he was raised from the dead. According to your word, I accept my gift of salvation. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you are a believer, believe him enough to do what he say. Act on it. There's power in the kingdom. Seek for it. Go look and find. Have a wonderful evening in the Lord. God bless you. God keep you.